Hello, this is Music Theory 1, video number 10, Writing Triads. This video is very connected to video number 8, which is about identifying triads. We're going to assume that you have a decent knowledge of what the different triads are and what intervals are found inside of them. If that's something that feels a little hazy to you, I would recommend going over some of the things in that video, because we're going to be talking about triad qualities in this video, as though we're pretty familiar with them. A brief refresher on the intervals that we see in our given triads. Here they are augmented, major, minor, and diminished. I've labeled on this slide both of the thirds that we find, the lower third being between the root and the third, and the upper third between the third and the fifth, and also the type of fifth that we have between the root and the fifth in each triad. When we're analyzing chords, we don't necessarily know what the intervals are, and so we're looking to identify those intervals and then see which of these triads match up with the intervals we find. When we're writing chords, we tend to know what kind of triad we want to write, and so we already know the intervals that we want. We just have to figure out which notes will match those intervals. And so it's going to be important to remember which intervals we want to find, and then to be able to use our interval writing skills to put those notes down on paper. Let's try doing one together. A lot of the times our triad writing exercises are going to look like this. We're going to know what quality we want the chord to be. In this case, we're going to want to write a minor triad, and we're going to have a member of that chord. In this case, we're being told that A flat is the root. What's the first step going to be in drawing this triad? I like to start by first filling in the notes in their proper spaces so that we've got stacked thirds for our triad. And so if we know A flat is the root, we know we're going to need some type of C, a third above that A flat, and some type of E, a third above that C. We know that there's some kind of A, some kind of C, and some kind of E in our chord. What's the next thing we have to do? We have to recall the intervals we are looking for in a given chord. Since we want to draw a minor triad, I need to figure out what intervals make up that minor triad. I'm going to focus on the intervals above the root. That's going to make it easier for me here. And so I know that I need a minor third above the root and a perfect fifth above the root to draw a minor triad. I need to get those intervals. And so my next step is going to be to look at the intervals and make sure I put the right accidentals in so that they match the ones that I want. In order to do that, we know what we do every time we have to check intervals. Yes, we have to analyze the major scale of the lower note, right? To figure out our intervals, we have to think about that major scale of the bottom note. Here we are comparing to A flat, and so I'm going to think about A flat major, and I check my circle of fifths and I see that A flat has four flats. They are B, E, A, and D. So let's see if we can't figure out how to get a minor third and a perfect fifth above this A flat. I want a minor third, and so I want to take a look at what I've got here, A flat to C natural, and I ask myself the same question I always ask, is the upper note in the major scale of the lower note? The answer here is yes, C natural is in the A flat major scale, it does not have any accidentals on C. And so that means this is a major third. But I want a minor third for my triad, and so that means I'm going to have to change this interval. To change a major interval into a minor interval, we have to make it a half step smaller, and so I'm going to put an accidental on that C. There it is, C flat, I've made it a half step smaller. Now I want to make a perfect fifth above that A flat. And so I know the perfect fifth is the fifth that is in the A flat major scale. I look at my key signature and say, well, what kind of E is in A flat major? And my key signature tells me that I need an E flat if I'm going to have a perfect fifth. This E natural is bigger than that. It's a half step bigger. A flat to E natural as it stands is an augmented fifth. But I want the perfect fifth, the one from the key signature, and so... There it is, E flat. This is my A flat minor triad. It has a minor third above the root and a perfect fifth above the root. That's how I know I've got my minor triad built on A flat. Whenever I'm drawing a triad, these are the steps I want to go through. I want to fill in my notes in their proper letter spaces or lines so that I have stacked thirds. I want to recall which intervals make up the triad so that I can accurately find the notes that fill those intervals. 
And then I want to use my interval writing skills so that I can ask what accidentals I might need to make so that I've got the proper intervals to spell my triad. Let's do another one together. Here we are, we're in the bass clef, we've got an E, and we've got our information here that we need. We know we want to write a diminished triad, and we know that E is the third of that diminished triad. That's right, sometimes we have to work with a pitch that is not the root, but our interval skills are going to let us do this without too much trouble. So the first thing I want you to do is to fill in on your own staff paper the other pitches that are going to make this triad. How can we have three notes in stacked thirds so that E is in the middle? Can you do that for me? Pause it, and then when you've done it, we'll move on. If E is going to be the third of our triad, then we know the other notes are going to have to be arranged like this. We know the root of the chord must be some flavor of C, and the fifth of the chord must be some flavor of G. Now which ones I'm not quite sure yet, but I know I need some kind of C, E, and G. The next step in drawing a triad is to recall the intervals that we need to make it up. And so I'm going to ask you, what intervals above the root make a diminished triad? What kind of third do we have between the root and the third? What kind of fifth do we have between the root and the fifth? Again, take a second to think about it, write it down, and then when you're ready to go on, we'll go on. The diminished triad does have a diminished fifth above the root, that's where it gets its name, and it also has a minor third above the root. Those are the two intervals that we want to make. So the next thing we want to do is check the interval that we have between E and C. Okay? We don't want to change that E, but we want to make sure we've got a minor third going down from E. And so to do that, you know what we have to do. That's right, I have a broken record here on these intervals. We have to check the major scale of the lower note. It is our favorite major scale, C major, which has no flats and no sharps. And so we're going to ask ourselves, what kind of third do we have right now? And is it the minor third we want? Is that E natural in the C major scale? Yeah, it is, isn't it? There's no flats and sharps, so E is in the C major scale. That means this is a major third. So the question is, what can we do to that C to change our interval from a major third to a minor third? I have to make this interval one half step smaller, and I can't change the E natural. That's my given pitch is the third. What can I do to the C? Think about what accidental you could put to make that interval one half step smaller. If we raise the C, we push it closer to the E natural, and we take that major third from C to E, and we make it a minor third. Okay? C sharp is going to be the root of this diminished triad, which has E as the third. We are getting close now. We just have to check on this fifth. We want a diminished fifth above our root, which is C sharp. And so again, I need to check the major scale of my lowest note, but now my lowest note is C sharp. And so I have to figure out what's that key signature for C-sharp major. C-sharp major, seven sharps, all sharps, F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. And so we expect to see a G-sharp. It's in that key signature. That would be the perfect fifth. What kind of a fifth do we have here? What's happened to that, in, that perfect fifth from C-sharp to G-sharp? Have we made it bigger or smaller? and by how much. Think about it, pause it if you have to, and then we'll come back and figure out exactly what happened together in just a second. When we took that G sharp and changed it to G natural, we took our perfect fifth and we took the upper note and moved it one half step closer to C sharp. We made the interval smaller by a half step. That means we have a diminished fifth here, and that's the fifth we're looking for in our triad. That means we've checked all our intervals. We have a minor third between the root and the third of the chord, and a diminished fifth between the root and the fifth of the chord. 
This is how we spell our diminished triad with E as the third. That's the end of our short video today on writing triads. Remember, we want to do this the same way every time. First, we're going to write in our notes so that we have stacked thirds. Second, we're going to recall the intervals we need to draw our particular triad. That's something we have to make sure we know pretty quickly. Then, we're going to use those interval writing skills to see, do we have the intervals we need, or do we have to throw some accidentals in to make things right? Okay, if we have a good knowledge of our key signatures, if we have a good skill at writing intervals, then writing triads is not going to be too painful for us. We just want to make sure we have those skills sharp so that we can use them when we're doing our triads here. That's all for today. Thanks for practicing with me, guys. I'll see you in class next time.